Okay, uh, this is a, uh, the title of, we are looking at a store and shelf uh, CDOM dynamics, and uh, this is a project that uh, Chris talked earlier. Uh, we have a NASA funded project and uh, m multiple uh, co authors in this, collaborators. So uh, we know we have been talking about this Assyrian complexes and the importance of this. And uh, the reason we are looking at these two, uh, two different bays is they are different. Into one is a set, uh, particle dominated system, uh, and the uh, Apalachicola Bay is a CDOM dominated system. Uh, in the Baratara Bay, we have um, a lot of exchange of seawater through the, uh, through the passes here. Whereas here, uh, we have multiple passes. With, river water being the main source of CDOM to the Apalachicola Bay. So what we are doing is we are integrating the ANCOM, uh, some of these uh, satellite base estimates of CDOM or DOC with ANCOM uh, uh, three-dimensional coastal ocean model, uh, which is at about two kilometer resolution. So uh, we are breaking this, uh, this uh, study uh, in, in the Louisiana coast uh, into this uh, Bayatari Bay on the left here and the shelf uh, system on the right. And of course the goal is to be able to link this SRI and shelf DOM fluxes or distribution and see uh, we can integrate some of the model outputs at different temporal and spatial scales. And you can see that uh, we have developed, a, we use some Landsat 5 and we are going to Landsat 8. But essentially we developed a pretty uh, robust algorithm for CDOM uh, versus uh, ratio green to red uh, uh, band ratio algorithms. And this is an example of a 30 meter spatial resolution uh, spatial distribution. And you can see uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, black lines are the wind vectors and you can see that during uh, some strong wind events, you do get strong uh, uh, you know, fluxes uh, that are of, of CDOM or DOC coming out from the bay. Uh, then looking out at the shelf processes, we can also, we have also developed some uh, algorithms for MODIS here in this case, and we have pretty strong relationship uh, between uh, DOC and CDOM as shown in here. So we applied that to a one kilometer uh, MODIS image as you can see here, and we have uh, a DOC distribution, spatial DOC distributions uh, for the whole shelf actually. And uh, here we have looked at uh, simulated salinity and current vectors. As you can see, the current vectors are plotted, overlaid on the CDOM uh, concentrations, abundance. And uh, during one of these uh, events, uh, so a cold front, for example, we do see that the current vectors, the currents are pushing the, st uh, are pushing the CDOM, DOC, out of, the sh out of the base into the inner shelf. And then further on is pushing that out into the outer shelf. So uh, these events are very important, and of, of course the goal would be to link some of these events together at different spatial and temporal scales. So the ch challenge, of course, is to look at seasonally varying plume and river water, and also the inflow. Another important consequence of having a large river outflow here is that some of these plume waters can enter into this base. So that complicates the modeling aspect and also the fluxes that that, that can be calculated from these uh, systems. Uh, so the second part of our study was essentially looking at the Apalachicola Bay. Here we looked at both CDOM, DOC stocks and fluxes. Uh, this is a work that has been published by Joshi et al. Uh, recently. And what we are doing, this is a flow chart that essentially shows that we have, uh, this is a river here, and we had done some sampling during the two, in the fall and the spring, some, uh, spring seasons. And this, we have done some, uh, so we, in this uh, processing flow diagram, we used in situ CDOM and DOC, satellite derived remote sensing, an important component of that, especially in this type of areas, is the, uh, is the atmospheric correction. We have to be very careful to obtain good uh, satellite derived uh, uh, measurements. So uh, we have developed a robust uh, VS based uh, CDOM algorithm uh, and, and also we have some seasonal CDOM DOC relationships. One point to note here is the relationship between uh, CDOM and DOC are different for the spring and the fall uh, seasons. Uh, so we use these uh, relationships to uh, get uh, CDOM and DOC maps 
uh, and also uh, uh, integrated that with uh, numerical model outputs of currents uh, to obtain DOC stops and fluxes. All right, so in this image, uh, these are the results of our study. Uh, this is a Bs image uh, at 750 meters resolution. And you can see that uh, on, the top figure is the CDAW maps. Uh, we, we have in the springs uh, during high river flow discharge, we have very high levels of CDAW, uh, especially around this region. Uh, when you go in the fall season, we, we do see very low levels of CDAW. However, uh, if you look at the DOC stocks, uh, we find that uh, relatively they are very much similar, the, the stock levels. Uh, during the two seasons. That's because of the, for the same CDOM levels, we have high levels of DOC during the fall uh, season. Uh, looking at the hydrodynamics of the bay during those two periods, we find that uh, 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 the, the bay hydrodynamics is influenced by winds, uh, current, uh, river discharge, and tides. So tides are very important in this, in this area. So as you can see, uh, high river discharge, we have low salinity values. And also strong, we looked at the currents through all the passes, and we can see that uh, flows are incoming to the eastern part of the bay and coming out to the western part here. But in any case, uh, we integrated this uh, model outputs at 250 meters with, this, with the DOC values uh, to obtain first uh, DOC stocks. Uh, in this case, we have estimated DOC stocks of about uh, 3.71 and 10 to 6 in March. Uh, and, and, they are, and in fact, the uh, DOC stocks were slightly were higher in, in, in the fall period. So uh, using this uh, data, the DOC uh, distribution maps and uh, current information from the numerical model, uh, we calculated DOC fluxes. So what we did is we look at volume fluxes uh, integrated over five days of, over multiple cycles, uh, tidal cycles, uh, and then we, uh, we determine uh, the net flux uh, for, the, for, that, for, one, for that particular day, and then uh, uh, include, uh, and use the satellite-based DOC concentrations to calculate the fluxes. One of the things that uh, we need to uh, consider in, in this case, and uh, this point was brought, was uh, one of the assumptions is of a well-mixed water column, and that could result in some overestimates of uh, DOC fluxes uh, in, this, uh, in this study. Another thing is uh, that, uh, that these this, this fluxes that we calculated are quite uh, high. We found that they are almost about 7 to 7% uh, 7 in, the, in the spring and 21% uh, in the fall. Uh, percent of the mean flux, 100-year flux that has been calculated for the Mississippi River. So uh, with that, I'll end this talk.